here says that way. Ten to two hundred and fifty sleepers per day for a two three man crew. What could possibly go wrong, eh? The swing saw, fucking evil. It's a fucking evil thing. Has the person holding on his jaws upside down with a trapeze. If you move upside down, you have it hang on, and there'll be a person swinging underneath yeah. you. Oh. I've seen this guy because I look just like the guy without the long hair upside down. It's only 800 metres to the corner. I'm glad because I'm not enjoying this. Hard work. As you heard Alan say, this is the last bit of dirt, and before long we're in McLean. Whilst there, I thought I'd drop in to see my mate Leon, who lives just up the road from where we were having some lunch. He was pleased to see me and he said, why don't you stay overnight? So I said, yeah, okay, why not? So the rest of the crew went on to Flat Rock where they camped the night and I stayed in McLean, catching up with them the next day. As you can imagine, Leon, Katie and I had a fantastic night catching up, reminiscing. We hadn't seen each other for a few years. The next morning I headed north over the new Clarence River Bridge, which really is quite an amazing structure. at a rest area I thought to myself I know somebody who lives in Darna who's that and then it occurred to me that it was Malcolm and Leslie old school friends so I gave them a call stopped in and said good day arranged to meet them later that night and then caught up with the rest of the guys in Lismore for our ride to Nimbin and the hinterland behind Byron Bay. Nimbin really is an amazing place I have to tell you a couple of stories of blokes I ran into while I was walking around 
There was this guy sitting in a wheelchair. He had a scar on his left leg that went from his, about his ankles up to his thigh. And he said, as I walked past, he said, mate, do, do you smoke pot? And I said, no, I don't smoke at all. And he said, oh, he said, that's a shame. So he was sitting there in his wheelchair. He was rolling a durry. I assume it was a durry. And he told me why he was in a wheelchair. He said, mate, he said, it was about 11 o'clock one night. I was pissed. And I decided to ride my skateboard down the main street of Nimbin. And somebody ran me over. Broken leg, broken hip, cracked ribs. He said, I was in hospital for six weeks. Can you believe it? And I'm looking at him thinking, yes, I can believe it. The second bloke I ran into was on the other side of the road. Tall, skinny bloke called Bill, as it turned out. And he said, do you think it's going to rain, mate? I said, oh, no, why? And he said, well, look at the clothes you're wearing. And I was just in my motorcycle gear. Anyway, we got talking. He said, oh, he said, I've sold my bike. Buggered my knees. I had to get two new knees. Oh, I said, that's, that's no good. And he said, yeah, he said, but I'm going to sail to New Zealand. And I said, have you thought about how you're going to get into New Zealand? He said, no, he said, I haven't actually. And he said, you know, my biggest problem. And I said, oh, no, what? He said, I can't get a cook. He said, I asked Shirley... And she said, yeah, yeah. Anyway, she rang me up the next day and she said, no, I'm not going to go. Who would have thought that a bloke with two new knees just about to sail his yacht to New Zealand in the middle of a pandemic would have trouble getting a cook? Well, there you go.